Buenas noches, muchachos. In today's video, we are going to talk about the 10 best small business ideas that are actually low cost and effective and very easy to start. And guess what? They're all online. So with that being said, we are starting now. Good morning, my beautiful people. My name is Mike Vestile, and if you are new to this channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell if you like all things making money online, passive income, and whatnot when it comes to creating just stuff online, right? We take the good parts of the world and we turn them all online and then we allow them to make money. But anyways, in today's video, I want to do a little review on a blog article I was reading, 107 best small business ideas of 2020, 107. You know, as an entrepreneur, uh, one of the things that we have is like entrepreneurship ADD, where we literally see so much opportunity and so many ideas. And because of that, we are just overwhelmed. And when I see this number, I get overwhelmed. And what I want to do right now is actually just break down the, maybe the 10 best most realistic ideas so I can save yourself time and money as well as the heartache because I've most likely did all 107 of these. So I'm going to give you guys the realistic what to actually expect. Not like the fluffy, oh, here's a hundred ways to make money online and you could all make money and get rich really fast. And it's so easy and you don't have to do anything. You just press a button, which is what most people want to hear right? Because most people are lazy and most people will never succeed because they do not want to deal with failure. They do not want to deal with hard work. And I'll tell you right now, maybe half of you are probably going to leave this video right now because you're like, oh man, I just wanted the hundred ways to make money, but I never really wanted to do anything. So I'm going to give a second for all the people that don't want to do actually the hard work to start a business to just be able to leave and maybe even dislike this video. You done? Okay, cool. So for all those people, Cheers to you and your future. But now, because you are here, I want to applaud you. Because you understand now what it actually means to start a business. And let's actually go on with these ideas as we go. So, you know, as an entrepreneur, there's so many different ideas that we have. And our superpower is also our biggest weakness. Like ideas are like crack to entrepreneurs like us, right? So when you want to start like a small business idea, it's better to just figure out what to actually expect. Like if someone, like if I saw a video like this, I knew what to expect with every business that I, I ever started in my life, I would have saved myself so much agony and energy and time uh, just by realizing the realistic situations that I would find myself in, right? So let's actually go over this and I'll, I'll give you guys a realistic up to date what's actually going on. He says, best thing is to start a blog. I mean, it's a really good idea, right? I have a blog. You could check it out on the second link below. We teach people how to actually start their blogs. It's only a couple dollars a month. The only problem with a blog, uh, what most people don't realize is it's a lot of work. It's going to take time. If you don't have time on your horizon, blogging won't make you money fast. So you need to have like a long-term approach of things. So for example, even if I just pull up my blog, right, you could see October 2020th, which is when this is like published, but you could see I've been publishing all the way back since I was like, before I interviewed all of these like multimillionaires or even six pack shortcut guy that made $10 million a year. You've seen the ads on YouTube. If you've been in a while, funny thing is now he's now my roommate, but I've been doing this since 2016, man. Let's actually pull this up. So look at this, April 17, 2017, how to be a digital nomad. Look, look at these. I've been trying at it for a really long time. And I'm just like talking about the things that I'm learning, right? And, and the thing about this, when it comes to blogging, like I'm just writing about all the things that I'm learning as well as, you know, when I was travel blogging and swimming with sharks and whatnot. The thing about this small business idea is it will take time, right? It, it's one of the more complicated things, even though it's one of the best because your blog, you own it, right? Unlike this YouTube video, like YouTube could just be like, you know what, Mike, I don't like you, peace out, and just like kick me out of the platform. Or Facebook, so many times I've started businesses on Facebook, the ad account would just get shut down and then I wouldn't have a business. The thing about a blog, the reason why everyone should have their own website is because they own the traffic. But because of it, it is also one of the more long-term thinking game plan of this. A lot of people that want to get rich quick, a blog is not for them because you won't make money fast, but it's really good for branding and to collectivize all of your platforms. Cause I'm on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Pinterest. I'm on all of these platforms, but the problem with all of that is I don't own any of it. The reason why a blog is good is because you own it. It is you. And no matter what happens, a, a 
platform like YouTube goes down, it doesn't matter because you still have your blog. But you have to have a long-term vision of this. If you're just coming in and be like, oh, I want to, you know, I read this 107 best ways by this guy with a really nice haircut. And he said, start a blog, start a blog. I saw the law of attraction and I saw the secret. And, you know, I just believe that wealth will attract me. And you have this like unrealistic approach to things. You need to understand a blog at most six to 12 to even 36 months before you actually start making money from this. You know, for me, my blog actually made money fairly fast because I coupled it with my YouTube channel, right? I had an external source of traffic. For other people, it's Pinterest. For other people, it's something else. But the blog itself is just for your brand. To make this a small business idea, to actually make this work, you need a traffic source. The problem with a blog, if you just depend on Google, is it takes months, if not years, to rank on Google if you don't know how to st start building backlinks and, and all these other things with the craziness of blogs. And one thing that they don't really teach you when it comes to starting a blog, because people make commissions recommending a blog article, like if you could see here, he's probably gonna recommend uh, to start a blog and then he would make money from that. A lot of the people that make good money in blogs are actually just teaching people how to start their own blog and then making money off the affiliate commission. But as you can see, a blog itself is not a business, it's just for branding. The actual business is what are you gonna use to create traffic? YouTube, Pinterest, Google SEO. What's the product that you're selling? Most people don't actually have a product with blogs yet, which is why they want to recommend hosting like Bluehost or teaching people how to buy courses or selling courses or even AdSense. Like he's making money from, you know, the retargeting ad that I'm getting from Athlean X. But the blog itself is not actually a business until you find a product that you could sell and a traffic source that will send people to the blog. But to make it even easier, what if you just, because the blog has some startup costs and even though it's actually taking away from money from me like the best way i can make money is if you start a blog through my link on the second link below but i know most people will start a blog and actually won't make money because they don't have this long-term vision so one thing that you could actually do is test things around first you know i would first focus on the traffic source before building your brand right because so many people are like oh i want this blog to be the prettiest thing in the world it needs to be having the perfect logo and it has to be perfect before i launch it well here's the thing you're going to launch a blog no one's going to see it meaning you're not going to make any money I would focus most of your time on how you're going to market the blog before you actually create the blog. So for example, Pinterest is a good, is a good way. I get 133,000 monthly viewers for me just pinning these images that I post up. My YouTube is a really good way too, because you could see, I just interview a bunch of people that are really successful as well as do a bunch of tutorials. And that's how people find out who I am. The blog, they don't care about the blog, right? Because people aren't just going to magically find your blog. You need to master a traffic source before you could actually make money with a blog. I know this is like pretty intense for just number one, right? But if we really think about it, right? Unless you master a traffic source like Pinterest or YouTube, which is my top one, if you're going to be a new person trying to find a small business idea, Quite frankly, you are not going to rank on the first page of Google because there's millions of other blog articles just like you. And it's hard to connect with just words, right? That's why anything with a personality really helps. That's why the businesses and the small ideas of the future are gonna be tied to a personality. It's kind of like Subway found Jared and he's like, this guy got really skinny because of Subway sandwiches. That's when Subway blew up. Right now, you are a Subway with your blog and you need to find your Jared. You, a blog is Subway and a blog itself won't make money until you become the Jared of your blog. And the best way to do that, like I said, start a YouTube channel, man. Turn on your phone. You look at my old videos and I encourage you to watch them because they are ridiculous. These were all filmed from my phone. Look at me talking in the middle of Spain. Look at me talking in like some random train. Like all this was filmed with my phone with horrible thumbnails, with horrible everything. But then I mastered this traffic source that allowed my blog to then become successful. Okay, I'm pretty heated with the blog because people don't understand what it actually takes to actually build a blog. It's one of the best things, but it's going to take some work master traffic source first so the second thing is online courses and coaching okay this this is a good small business idea but remember every like the way people teach people how to make money is always backwards like here spend all of this money on this big real estate oh and then spend all this money on this big fancy staff 
Oh, you need like 30 employees too. You got to spend money. We got to raise money for that. Oh, and we also need to have like nice furniture in the store too. Okay, so let's put a bunch of nice furniture. Oh, now we actually have to, you know, work on building a good product. Okay, now you spend a bunch of money working on building a product. And here you are spending tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars if you're in a brick and mortar business having this product. But guess what? No one knows what your product is. No one knows who you are. No one knows that this product could actually solve their problem. So why would they buy from you? And if no one's buying from you, how are you going to make money? If you're not making money, how are you going to actually reinvest back in your business? You know, the thing about all of this, it's all building things backwards. When you should, when you, if you look at like McDonald's, what they do is they kind of like take an aerial approach and they just see where are the most trafficked areas, right? Where are the people where most cars are driving through? And then before thinking of actually buying real estate, they're like, oh, this is where the people are. This is where my audience is. This is where I'm going to start selling my product. You see, the thing about small businesses and ideas is everything, like I said, start backwards. Here they're saying, oh, get the piece of real estate first before actually knowing where the people are. If you build a Walmart in a village where there's only two people in it, the Walmart's gonna fail because there's not a lot of people hanging out. If you build a mall in the middle of Antarctica, the mall is gonna fail because no one's gonna be there. You need to figure out where the people are gonna come from first before you even build the blog. Same thing with online courses and coaching. That's like you spending years of your life on a product, but no one's gonna buy your product if they don't know who you are, right? This is a really good idea, but I wanna encourage you, when you start thinking of business ideas, the 10 business ideas are a lot easier when you first build up an audience or you find out where the people that you want to sell to already hanging out. Vegans, you go to a vegan convention or you look at vegan content, you find vegan influencers. It doesn't matter. There are people that you can sell a product or service, affiliate marketing to, an online course or coaching to, but you just gotta find out where do they hang out. So until you start your own online course and coaching, do not actually build it, focus on, finding things out. So for example, say I wanted to sell an online course on losing weight, right? I want to lose weight. I'm like, oh my God, you know, I'm feeling kind of fat and I feel like, you know, I, I just, I feel unhappy. I feel depressed. All these things that comes with weight loss issues, right? Say I want to sell a course to someone like myself who's not confident in my own body. How would I actually find more of me? One of the things, of course, is YouTube. If you just type in how to lose weight, wait fast. Not only that, but if you click on space, you could see all of these ideas that are recommendations for what content you could create, or you could hire somebody to create so that people could start finding you. Let's just do how to lose weight fast. Now you see, okay, there's 1 million people that follow Abraham, the pharmacist, right? You could see that these are where you need to start building your business. Once you start building these views up, then it's easy to start a blog. Then it's easy to sell courses because you have the eyeballs right? The name of the game in the future, we are in the influence economy where people are going to buy just because they have attention. You could even partner with this guy and create a course for him if he doesn't know how to do courses, which is a really exceptional thing because a lot of these influencers are really bad at technology. So if you just learn that part while they focus on the influencing side of things, then you could start building the product. But you have to first like solidify the partnership first, right? So that's why with the second thing, remember, focus on the marketing before you actually focus on the product. Think about it like Kickstarter. Because if you spend all of your time on one and two, you're literally wasting your time. Like how many people do you know are like, I will launch when I have the perfect website and then it's just crickets. Because they're not focusing on marketing first. Marketing is the lifeblood of all business. Start an e-commerce business. So here, here's like the realistic things when it comes to starting an e-commerce business, right? Number one, of course, you could kickstart it, right? You could raise a Kickstarter campaign. You could, you could get a bunch of products in China and stuff like that. And that's a smart way, but you need to first, of course, build the audience, which is why Kickstarter does really well because, you know, you're literally raising this idea and crowdfunding it to see if the people actually want this product to be in real life, right? That's one route. That's something that I would actually recommend more so because then it shows that there's demand. But most people, they wanna start like, for example, a drop shipping business or a wholesale business. So one of the things, cause we were in an e-commerce business and we did all routes possible. We wish we did the Kickstarter way because we would have saved so much money. But it's the exact same way like before, focusing too much on the product instead of figuring out how you're actually gonna sell and market the product, right? Normally what you would do is you would go to like a site like alibaba.com and you would buy products for like a thousand to 2000 units at a time. Like I remember back in the day we were selling grill mat, we were selling barbecue brushes 
And these were like the things that we were selling. And you could see when it comes to China, there's a minimum order that you would have to buy. So 2000 for about 60 cents to dollar piece, let's just say on a good note, let's, let's say a dollar, right? That's $2,000 startup capital. And here I am with $2,000 of inventory. Now it's the exact same problem that we had in the beginning. How am I actually going to sell it? Right now I have save. I only have $2,000 to start my small business idea. I have no more money for marketing. I have no more money for marketing. So you can see why it's like pretty risky starting an e-commerce business, especially if you're going to go the wholesale route. One way that I did it was the opposite. It was uh, called drop shipping. Where what I did is I would sell things in low quantities. And then when it sold, I would go to a place like eBay, take the sale, put in their customer information in here and then ship it to them. And then just take like a small little profit. That's because I was doing a lot of research around this time. You know, I was able to sell a lot of different things on eBay. I was like, oh, okay, I could sell this and this and this. And wow, I could sell this for 20 bucks and buy it here for $10. And I start seeing exactly what it is that the audience actually wants. And when I'm able to see that, I'm able to figure out, okay, what can I then buy in bulk now? What I don't want you to do, if your small business idea is e-commerce, is spending what little capital that you have to buy a bunch of inventory that you might not know might necessarily sell. But until you do and you figure out which one of these sells just by experience, then you could go buy it in bulk. This is what Tom Ford's did. So for those that are familiar with like Tom Ford shoes, how they sold is they literally would have just like one store in just some bougie place in California. They would come in and all of all he bought was just one pair, one side of the shoe. So he wouldn't buy two pairs when he first bought them. They were all one sizes, right? Because the problem with shoes is you need many different sizes, many different shapes, many different colors, many different styles. He only had one size and it was the left shoe and that was it. People would come in, they'd be like, oh, do you have this in this size? No, but do you like this? Then the customer would be like, yeah, I like this. And then he would be like, okay, well, you could actually pre-order this and we could order it for you. And then his cost wasn't that much. He didn't have to buy hundreds of different variations of shoes. He literally took the order in the store and then he started tallying which, how many of which variations and what sizes were people pre-ordering. And then once he had the numbers, he then went up to a Nordstrom and said, hey, these are the percentage of people that will actually buy it in these sizes. Let's do business together. And that's how he was able to build it into like a billion dollar brand, right? So you got to understand when it comes to small business ideas, you need to have this creativity to start figuring out how you can actually make more money with not spending more, with being creative with your work. So the fourth thing is starting a podcast. Now, of course, I would actually recommend this 100%. Starting a podcast changed my life. And I didn't want to complicate it like everybody else. Like I literally started my podcast on YouTube, which was completely free to start. You know, you just have two cameras and you just like upload it. And the thing is, it's very easier to get an audience other than, you know, listening to it the audio way where the only way that people find each other from the audio podcast is just from word of mouth, which some people don't have the time for that, right? With YouTube, you could get found instantly because people like epic stories. Like this was like my third or fourth podcast that ended up blowing up. It got half a million views in like a couple of months. And when I look at the analytics of this video, you can check it out. Ever since it was published, I made over four grand for just this one hour conversation. And this was like pennies compared to all the money we made in the back end, right? So you could see that starting a podcast is good because it's just how business naturally happens. How do you build a business? You don't just do it by reading blog articles. You do it from networking, from strategizing, from creating mastermind groups, from creating an audience, and then figuring out what to sell them to. It kind of tackles all of those things and focuses on the marketing before actually focusing on the product. That's why if you're focusing on product first, in my opinion, it's wrong. If you focus on trying to build the perfect website, that, that's wrong. You need to only focus on sales and marketing in the beginning and then work your way and reverse engineer it back to the beginning on where you're actually starting. Starting a podcast, I would actually recommend it. How I would do it is I would make a long list of 100 people that are in the audience that you want to serve. If you're a vegan, find the top 100 vegan people. If you want to sell supplements, find the top 10 supplement experts and then interview them. Just be like, hey, you know, like we want to do this Zoom interview and stuff like that. They'd love that, right? They'd love that. Have a conversation with them. And then you just create like titles to get them found. One way is just like, for example, I interviewed someone in the carnivore diet. So I was able to get found. Here's an hour conversation. And I was like, vegan eats nothing but meat for 100 days. This is how I would attract people to my audience. And then I could figure out how to sell them stuff. But not only that, this does everything. I networked with someone that could essentially create the product for me. I built an audience because I put it up on YouTube. 
Number three, I'm not actually creating the content. I'm asking them questions and they're creating the content for me, which is why podcasting is awesome because it's like, it kind of is the easiest of all of the things. It's just, you need to have a long-term vision of it because it just takes some time to network through the right people. The fifth one, sell custom print products. Remember, focus on the audience. Like I said, you're not going to build a real big business with this. I, I, I made money with this, but it was very short-term lived right? Because I always had to change up things. I wish I built the audience first before this. I was selling Jesus t-shirts and elephant t-shirts and Christianity t-shirts and stuff like that. Uh, but because I wasn't an influencer in the space, nor did I connect with the influencers, it was very hard to scale this even bigger. And I felt like I was constantly just on this rat race to try to keep things up and afloat. Uh, which is why something I wouldn't recommend graphic design same thing like we said before graphic design isn't really a small business You're more like a freelancer working for someone. I made a bunch of videos before with this if you just go to upwork.com What I would actually do is focus on getting clients to do freelancing work for right Just literally start networking You could do this with the podcasting idea as well And you ask them well, what is your biggest pain points when you get on the conversation with them? They're gonna be like, oh, I need content writers. And you can literally type in content writers here. And if someone that you're podcasting with tells you that their biggest problem is a content writer, charge them $100 an hour to do the content writing, but then hire somebody for $35 an hour and then have them do the work. You profit the difference. All you did was connect the person that had a problem with someone that could actually do it. That is the business. The way that this blog article talks about that, this is just more like freelancing. It's not a business idea. It's a great online job. It's not an actual business because you are the technician. Read E-Myths e Revisited. You do not want to be the technician when it comes to a business because you're going to become stressed. You're always still trading your time for money and it's just a glorified job. Seven, web, web, web development. You can start by developing websites for your friends and family to polish your skills. Like I said, when it comes to this, it's the exact same thing. It's just finding arbitrage. You could do this exact same thing with podcasting. And if someone says, oh, we need a website for you, just literally be like, okay, web developer. Say, for example, you're in the dental niche, right? And you're interviewing all these dentists. And they're like, oh, we need a web developer because you ask them, what is their pain points? You could hire someone from Pakistan or India for $20 an hour and you charge $100 for your time. They would do it because most people don't know how to use Upwork. And you would just kind of capture the value in difference. This is what my friend did with freelance writers. He understood companies needed writers, but they didn't want to go vet all the people on Upwork. So what he did is he found all the cheap writers in Pakistan, in Colombia, in Philippines, and he quality controlled them. And once he knew they were good quality for $10 an hour, he would then charge 40 or $50 an hour and he would just pocket the difference. That is like a legit business idea that I don't see much people talking about in these blog articles, okay? It takes creativity. Eight, Instagram influencer. This is something good, but it's very hard to grow on Instagram now. The only way to grow on Instagram is through networking and collaborations with other big influencers. But I get you, most people are sitting at home right now watching it on their laptop or their phone, not doing anything, not knowing anybody influential. So this is gonna take a lot of time. You could actually focus on the podcast and this will just grow naturally. The ninth one is a phone case business. It's the exact same thing with the e-commerce thing. You know, you're gonna buy $2,000 worth of phone cases and you're not gonna go know how to sell it. And the thing about phone case businesses or physical product businesses is you always have to reinvest the profits. Meaning you're gonna need like some type of investment if you don't do Kickstarter to actually scale this business because as e-commerce businesses grow, they get more complex. You need to hire more people. It's better to focus on the content approach of things and build an audience and kickstart to that audience a physical product, which is something that I could potentially do later on and I could document out. And last but not least, they say affiliate marketing. Now this is something that's a no brainer, but it only comes easy when you build an audience first. Do you see how, when it comes to the name of the game, I just wanted to create this 10 best business ideas to actually get started because you know you could overcomplicate it it could be 10 best business ideas it could be you know all the way down to 107 if you're actually going to go down and read all of these right we're only on 13 right and there's 107 business ideas how many of these are you actually going to apply each one of these could lead you down a rabbit hole that could take months if not years of your life and a bunch of money with it if you're not careful which is why if i'm going to simplify this entire video 
If you just focus on building an audience on YouTube, on Pinterest, through networking, through podcasting, go to your local chamber of commerce or local meetups and build an audience or a network of people there. If you just do that, number two, you ask them what their problems are. Hey, what are your problems? What are your pain points? They tell you, oh, it, it could be a product related problem or a service related problem. That's when you then focus on creating the product. Don't focus on a product or try selling things before you actually find a market that would actually want to buy it. That's one of the biggest problems in Silicon Valley where they raise tens of millions of dollars on this app or widget A and they're like, well, I don't know who wants to buy this. They need to find that product market fit. That takes millions of dollars. The better way to do that is to crowdsource it. Build the audience, ask them the problem. It could be a service-based problem or if it's a service-based problem, you just find the people on Upwork to solve the problem for you. Or if it's a Kickstarter or if it's a physical product, you could then raise money from that audience and then use that money to then create the product because now you know people are actually gonna buy it. It's like a no brainer, right? It's like, it's like you know, when you ask out a girl, you wanna know if she likes you first before you ask her out so you don't get rejected. This is like what happened, like when I was in middle school, I was like, man, I can't ask her out because what if I get rejected before I grew the balls to actually just go up to them and be like, hey, you know, I think you're attractive. You wanna go for some Chipotle later. Back when I was younger, you know, you wanted to see if they would like you first before you know, you would actually ask them out and say yes. It's the exact same thing in business. You want to know if people are going to buy something before you actually sell them something. As opposed to the other way around, you sell people that don't even know they want to buy something, which is the hardest thing in the world. It threw a lot of money out of my bank account because of that. Uh, but guys, what are your thoughts on this? What are your best ideas when it comes to you know, starting a small business ideas, comment below. And what are you currently working at? Let me know below. Um, and if you feel generous, make sure you leave a like. It helps out the algorithm to really give more people these ideas instead of like the regurgitated list school videos that really aren't moving you guys forward and actually creating transformation like what I'm actually trying to create for you guys. And of course, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And guys, I'm starting a second channel where I'm going to be more creating videos like this, but more direct right? It's not for everybody. It's only for the people that actually want to hear the real life advice to actually succeed in life. Check that out below on the second link. And I love you guys. I'm so grateful so much for you guys for checking out this video. Applause for you guys for taking your future seriously. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take it easy.